Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the mental health and personality factors that may be at work in the life and death of Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher was an actress and a writer who was best known for playing the role of Princess Leia in the Star Wars movies. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. Here I will go through Carrie Fisher's background, and then I'll move to the mental health and personality factors. So starting with the background, Carrie Fisher was born in Burbank, California on October 21, 1956. Her mother was an actress named Debbie Reynolds, and her father was a musician named Eddie Fisher. According to Carrie, Eddie Fisher had a history of bipolar disorder. Her parents divorced in 1959. Carrie was mostly raised by her mother. Carrie attended high school for a few years, but she dropped out because she was performing in a Broadway revival of the 1919 musical Irene. This Broadway revival starred her mother. Carrie returned to school in London and eventually went to college, but she dropped out of college as well. She started therapy at 15 due to difficulties with mood dysregulation. Her first movie was the social comedy Shampoo in 1975, but she became famous after she was cast as Princess Leia in the original Star Wars movie. The movie was released in 1977. In 1976, Carrie said that she had a three-month affair with actor Harrison Ford, who played Han Solo in that movie. She started dating the singer Paul Simon during the filming of Star Wars. They would date until 1983 when they married. They would divorce in 1984, although they continued to date for a while after the divorce. Carrie Fisher would play that character of Princess Leia again in the 1980 movie, The Empire Strikes Back. Carrie used cocaine while that movie was filming. Around that same time, 1980, Carrie was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, but said that she rejected the diagnosis, only to accept it about four years later after an overdose when she was 28 years old. This occurred not long after the release of Return of the Jedi in 1983. She said that she didn't initially believe the diagnosis because she was using substances at that time, so she thought the physician was trying to be nice to her by saying bipolar instead of saying addicted to substances. Carrie Fisher appeared in many other movies. She appeared in TV shows and, of course, on Broadway, as I mentioned. She wrote a novel titled Postcards from the Edge, which later became a movie starring Meryl Streep. Carrie also edited many screenplays during her career mostly before 2004. She was known for her ability to polish scripts for movies and television shows. In 2005, a lobbyist named Greg Stevens died of an apparent overdose from narcotics and cocaine in Carrie Fisher's California home. In 2013, Carrie Fisher had a manic episode while performing on a cruise ship. She had to be hospitalized after that. She would return to Star Wars as Princess Leia for the movie The Force Awakens, which was released in 2015. Carrie Fisher was flying from London to Los Angeles on December 23, 2016, when a passenger who was sitting near her reported that Carrie had stopped breathing. CPR was performed until the plane landed and paramedics could take over. Carrie was transported to the hospital and placed in intensive care, but she would die. On December 27, 2016, she was 60 years old. Her cause of death is not known. On the death certificate, it says cardiac arrest slash deferred, but later tests indicated that at the time of her death, Carrie had several substances in her system, including cocaine, MDMA, heroin, and other narcotics. Debbie Reynolds, Carrie Fisher's mother, would die the next day from a stroke. Carrie Fisher died before the release of The Last Jedi in 2017, but of course the recording was already done, so she appeared in that film posthumously. Footage from The Force Awakens was used to feature her posthumously in The Rise of Skywalker in 2019. Now moving to the mental health and personality factors. As I mentioned, Carrie Fisher was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a major mood disorder characterized by the presence of manic episodes and almost always depressive episodes as well, but technically depressive episodes are not required for a diagnosis of bipolar 1. A manic episode is characterized by a decreased need for sleep, 
a loss of appetite, goal-directed behavior, being euphoric, having a lot of energy, impulsive decisions, often involving extremes, like spending a lot of money, as well as other symptoms. A depressive episode would have features like feeling hopeless, sleeping too much, not sleeping enough, having difficulty concentrating, and failing to gain pleasure in activities that used to be pleasurable. Carrie Fisher was an advocate for those suffering from bipolar disorder. She described the illness as an all-consuming challenge that required a lot of stamina and even more courage to deal with. She said that having the disorder was something to be proud of and not ashamed of. Carrie was really a champion for the mentally ill. She worked diligently to remove the stigma from bipolar disorder as well as from all mental illnesses. One of the things I really liked about the way Carrie talked about her disorder is that she talked about it in context. With Carrie, it really wasn't about the technical details of the disorder, but rather the lived experience of it. Like how her relationship with her mother and other relatives interacted with the disorder, and how her symptoms could be explained as a combination of all the different stressors in her life. Another thing I liked about her approach was that she respected the destructive power of bipolar disorder. It can be a devastating illness, and she faced it head on. She didn't say things like, it was going to be okay, or don't worry about it. She made it clear that bipolar disorder was a major negative factor in her life, but she still moved back to a message of optimism and courage. In addition to bipolar disorder, Carrie appeared to really struggle with substances. From what Carrie Fisher described, it appears as though she had both manic and depressive episodes, and she used substances in an attempt to compensate for her mood. This is common with bipolar disorder because people with this disorder sometimes believe that these substances can slow them down when they are manic, kind of bringing balance, or speed them up when they're depressed to achieve that same goal, kind of leveling out. In reality, of course, this often ends up in a catastrophe, like somebody becoming addicted to substances and making their mood symptoms even worse. What's more, substances and prescription medications often don't mix well, leading to more mental and physical health risks. It has been theorized that bipolar disorder indirectly caused Carrie Fisher's death. We know that the standardized mortality rate for bipolar disorder is 1.9. So this is called the SMR, and the SMR is the ratio of observed to expected. So if somebody's looking at a population of 100 people, and they would expect 10 to die from a certain cause over a period of time, and 20 die, the SMR would be 2. Again, with bipolar, it's 1.9. So almost twice as many deaths as would be expected. Many of the excess deaths can be explained by cardiovascular issues. Bipolar disorder is associated with behaviors that increase the risk of cardiac death, like substance use, cigarette smoking, poor nutrition, failing to be screened for cardiovascular disease risk factors, and not following through with treatment or preventive measures. Interestingly, the risk of cardiac death is increased above and beyond what is explained by the effect of these risk factors meaning that bipolar disorder leads to cardiac death through other mechanisms. Some people theorize that just the sheer amount of distress from the depressive episodes and the manic episodes increases the risk of death. Another explanation would be that bipolar disorder and cardiovascular disease share common etiological factors, meaning some of the factors that cause cardiovascular disease may also cause bipolar disorder. One example is inflammation. Depression and mania are connected to inflammation, and of course, heart disease is as well. There's no way to know for sure what factor or combinations of factors led to Fisher's death, but it seems reasonable to believe that her excessive substance use played a part. Carrie Fisher engaged in a number of behaviors that are thought to be helpful. Seeking therapy, she was compliant with medication at least some of the time, she eventually accepted that the diagnosis was real, but I think that her use of substances really limited how much success she would have when coping with this disorder. Another factor that may explain the relationship between bipolar disorder and premature death is that mental health professionals don't always understand the connection and may not work to encourage clients to comply with medical treatment. Carrie's life and death may help make that connection clear. 
mental health and physical health factors influence one another. They cannot always be separated. The last item I'll cover here about Carrie Fisher is her great sense of humor. She was witty and had phenomenal delivery. Just a few of the many examples of her humor. When Eddie Fisher left Debbie Reynolds, he started a romantic relationship with Elizabeth Taylor. Carrie Fisher was commenting on this one time, talking about Elizabeth Taylor's perfume, Passion, which was about to come out, and she was saying that she did not want a bottle of this perfume. She said, I'm a casualty of Elizabeth Taylor's passion. Talking to George Lucas about her role in Star Wars, she said, you have owned my likeness all these years, so every time I look in the mirror, I have to send you a check for a couple of bucks. Regarding her return to Star Wars The Force Awakens and concerns over her weight, she said this of the movie producers, they want to hire part of me, not all of me. They want to hire three-fourths. All I have to do is get rid of the fourth somehow. The fourth can't be with me. The last one here, when reflecting on how she was recognized for having bipolar disorder, she said, I get a lot of awards for being mentally ill. Apparently, I am better at being mentally ill than almost anything else I've done. Seriously, I have a shelf of awards for being bipolar. Her sense of humor and down-to-earth way of relating her experiences are rarities among celebrities. So those are my thoughts on Carrie Fisher. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.